Hello, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and today we're looking at the Erica Sin sample drum. Let's get right into it. Here we go. We're going to do a little bit of slicing and performing with a break beat on channel two and a series of FM basses on channel one. I'm going to use the performance controls to switch through different break beats and change the decay of my samples and the filter on channel one, and we're just going to get into it. Let's do it. Oh baby, that was fun. All right, let's hear a couple more examples and then we'll get into how this mother jamma works. First off, some weird shit. Two banks of vocal samples getting CV modulated like crazy. Backwards and forward loops. Just, I wanted to show you how weird this thing could get. Two channels of singing bowls, different play modes, changing the start time. This is one of the three patches that I've uploaded to my second channel. Multi-sampled spherical wavetable navigator getting filtered and resequenced by the Ericsson sample drum. Here's a second demo. This is not Rocket Science Tuesday, fed a whole bunch of sequences into the TSL from Instro. I recorded them all, sliced them up, and now I'm playing them back live in a whole new way. Finally, I fed a reel of Morphogene with a whole bunch of Kalimba samples into the Ergoson sample drum, chopped it up, and had it sliced and resequenced in a whole new way that uh, allowed me to perform it back. We'll show you how to do all this stuff and more. But first we'll talk about that first performance and how it went down. Okay, so what is going on here? Well, I was in what's called performance mode and I have two samples. I have the break beat on the bottom and I have a series of little FM bass hits on the top. And what you can do in performance mode is map a lot of the features that are available to you in sample editing and effects and slicing into three knobs here, uh, three for each sample. So if I hit this, I can choose which channel. So A, B, C, D, E, F and um, I can assign all kinds of stuff to it. So this is a really great introduction to just like the performance aspect of this, like how much I can do with performance stuff on the fly. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about what's mapped here and then we can move on to how it do. Parameter one of the effect is mapped to the FM base. That's the cutoff frequency of a high pass filter, the decay of the overall sample. So I'm uh, modulating the envelope. And over here is the playback mode. So it goes between forward, forward loop, floop, which is the best word in the world, and uh, backwards and forward. So I can just get some interesting reverse glitching. On the bottom, we have four sliced break beats, and I can switch between them because I have this mapped to the sample. It keeps on playing the slices through um, so I can get like some cool variety. And then I can actually change the step mode here. Uh, it's going to normally just go um, from front to back, but um, I can change it to random and get a little bit of glitching and stuff like that. 
And finally, we have um, the decay of the envelope that's assigned to amplitude for this thing. So I can get little tiny break beats or I can get um, the full thing. So this mode is really, really fun. Let's go into the rest of what's going on with the sample drum. The first thing that you're probably going to want to do when you load it up is go into library. Library is where you load up samples off the SD card, which is right here. Samples on the card should be 48K 16-bit. If they're mono, they'll load up fine to one channel. If they're stereo, you'll have to pick if you want the left side of the sample or the right side of the sample to load in. It can fit a lot, and a really cool thing is it can have subfolders, um, which is a really big deal to me as a, someone who's a stickler for organization. So I've loaded a ton of stuff up on here, and um, we may or may not play with it as we go. There also is a sample library that comes with it. So over on the right here, you'll see that we have um, a little sample bank thing. How much does this go up to? 64. So you can have up to 64 samples per slot per project. You also have a RAM consideration and it will tell you how much RAM you have there. As you're moving through stuff, you can um, preview the left-hand side with trigger one. If you're moving over here, hitting trigger one will preview that side. So very, very, very useful to be able to preview your samples. So if you want to load a sample up, you can scoot over here to a blank slot and hit add and um, it will add a sample in there. Same goes for the other channel and you access the two channels by going up and down with this nifty flicker. And the cool thing that they've done with the OS is that any of these menus that you're in, you'll automatically just be in that menu for the other sample channel. So uh, I found that to be the, the best way to implement this kind of thing. So you load up your samples and then you can go over to your sample area. In normal sample mode, you have access to tune, so you can tune this in semitones. We have the mode, the playback mode, and here's where you can adjust it globally for everything. You have sample start, sample end, and if you are in a loop mode, um, the loop point. So we can actually create little loops and those can all be modulated via CV. You can move through the available samples with this right here. So you can get through all the different samples and make edits to them if you want. The thing I love about this thing is just how like, it's like a little workstation. It's super visual. Um, everything is really, really easy to access. It's pretty intuitive once you actually get to know the uh, ins and outs. It's really nice to be able to just like make these kind of changes really, really fast um, on the fly when I'm in a performance setting or when I'm in a recording setting and want to get going. So over here we have amplitude and uh, down here are your main controls. So you have attack, hold and decay. And each one of these has a shape. So you can get exponential, logarithmic, you know, you can you can get wacky with it. Pretty nice, right? Also, there's a overall range control up here. So mid, short, long, and relative. That will increase the overall duration of these, uh, these things um, when you are playing with different ranges up here. Effects. So you can assign uh, an effect to each one of these sample things. Um, the delay and reverb aren't nothing to write home about, but it's really nice to have a low pass and high pass filter. The bit crush is nice. The fold is nice. The drive is really useful. We have drive on the break beats and I think that's it. You can actually CV modulate all of these parameters here and you can actually CV modulate the effect itself. So you can like rand step or something through the effects or use a, a trigger or gate to maybe switch between two effects if you want to, which is pretty cool. We already talked about library. You can save and reset your projects here, um, single meaning one, double meaning both, and then um, you can empty out both of your projects if you want and start from scratch, which we will probably do shortly. CV, okay. So each one of these has three CV inputs, as you can see right here. I'm going to play this while we talk. So I have, in channel one here of this, I have one volt per octave coming from the This Is Not Rocket Science Tuesday, which is sending a one volt per octave sequence to these samples. This thing does accept one volt per octave as a sample manipulation source, which is really nice. If you hold shift while you're in the CV thing here, you can change the actual voltage range that's coming in. So right now you can see tune is set to one volt per octave. So you can change it, which is really, really useful. I don't have anything mapped to CV uh, number three, but um, you do have depth control and here's all the stuff that you can do. Sample start, uh, the sample itself, um, sample tune, sample start and loop, attack, hold, decay, the actual shape of the attack and decay, the overall amp level, the amp range, slicing, which we'll get into in a second, and then here's the effect parameters, the effect type. So lots and lots to CV modulate, which is nice. Let's talk about slicing real quick. All right, so now we're looking at channel two, I believe. Let's go into our sample, and we are 
in a weird mode. Let's go ahead and enter the slicing menu. So you can see I have slices here, but right now if I mess with this, I would be messing with the sample itself. You switch back and forth between them by pushing this button right here. So now I'm in slice mode. It's in step uh, CV, so it's waiting for CV input to pass through the steps. You can CV modulate the steps themselves. Um, we're going to go back to uh, forward. Great. So right now, every single time it receives a gate, it will move forward through that, and I have Steppy sending it uh, 16th note gates. All right, so to slice something, first you have to enter slicing mode, like this, and then you can either choose the amount of slices you want to slice it up by. So for something like this, it was really easy. I just sliced it up by 16 slices, and I got a nice even amount because it's a nice even bar. Um, but you can also enter manual slice mode and have the ability to uh, scroll around and enter your own slices on the little waveform thing, which is really, really nice. Um, you have different modes to play back. So we are in forward right now. You can go backwards. You can go forward. You can go random. And you can have um, the CV input in here uh, change the slice index, which is really, really cool. Let's go back to forward right now. You still have the ability to switch your samples up here and manipulate them. So you can have a bank of sliced samples, which is really, really cool. Let's go into the CV for this. Um, I want to give you this heads up. This right here is a gate signal that's coming from Steppy at the beginning of each phrase. And it is set to a very important thing, slice reset. So um, depending on how your system works, um, you know, you're going to have these slices that move through uh, forward or backward or whatever, but I want to make sure that on that downbeat, the slice is reset to zero so that I can um, have a, a coherent beat no matter how much I messed it up at the beginning of each thing. Other than that, everything that was being done to this was done via the um, performance screen, which is this. So you can see having control over a bank of sliced drum breaks is pretty dope. All right, let's head on over to the last thing. Global settings, you have info for your firmware and stuff like that. I'm on 1.9. This is really nice. You have um, output amounts for each one. You get this really cool little oscilloscope thing going on. So I had my output one turned up a bit. Um, you can change display settings. All right, what's this? CV pop-up. That sounds fun. Let's turn that on. Uh, and um, some general settings. So now we've gone into the basics of how this works. I think it's pretty clear that you send it triggers. Samples are triggered. Um, you can move through those samples with CV that are loaded up into your project, your bank here. I have a bunch of FM bases. You can move through those with CV. You can move through those in the sample selection screen, which is the, uh, the waveform editor. You can edit your waveforms. You can edit slices. You can do... Um, effects and envelopes. So let's talk about recording in and the fun that you can do with that, because I think this is where I've had the most fun with uh, this, having a uh, recording capable sampler um, that I can just input stuff into and go to town with is really, really cool. So we're going to go over to our project. We're going to zero out the rest of our stuff and we're going to record some shit. Okay, in order to record something, which we're going to use the 4MS Spherical Wavetable Navigator for this, we need to plug something into CV3. And it's hard to see, but there's like some like black printed overprint stuff here that tells you like where some stuff is, and it does say record right here. So let's go ahead and go out of the right hand output, which is the mono output, and into our friend La Sample Drum. Let's go, make sure we're on one, and let's go over to our library. And instead of loading something up from there, let's hit record here. And let's hit monitor. Ooh, it loud. Okay, so in this mode, you have, uh, the first thing you should go over to is your range. Adjust your range until you have a volume that's not clipping. We're gonna use 10 volts. You could probably get away with five volts, but let's use 10 volts. You also have individual level control here, which is nice. So, also a threshold for recording so that it will pick up once the threshold is hit. So if you're sending in a signal that's going to stop and start, use the threshold, hit record, and then hit play on whatever your source is. But we're going to adjust the uh, Wavetable Navigator to create 
some um, evolving sort of like pad stuff, and then we're gonna sample it and do some cool stuff with it over here. So let's do that over here. Okay, great. So let's just go ahead and hit record over here by hitting uh, this one right here. And now we're recording. You can stop and start recording pretty easily uh, if you need to. And we'll just let this record for a bit. We'll play with this. Great. Done. So monitor turns off. Now we're going to hit this to save. Here you can name it. I've just been leaving the default names because I'm lazy. So let's go ahead and hit OK. I forgot which button does this. It sort of has a little delay on it. There we go. Once it's decided it wants to do that, it will save it. So I'm going to do this a few more times and we're going to use different wavetables and maybe different spreads because uh, I think this is a cool way of showing off the full capabilities of the record stuff in here. So let's go back. Let's hit monitor. Record. Do this three times. I want to get nice shifting polyphonic timbres. I'm sorry I've been saying timbre wrong this whole time. It's timbre, but that sounds really wrong to me. Timbre. It's timbre. It's not timber. Timbre. Timbre. Thank you, Swervical Wavetable Navigator. So now we have three samples that we recorded, and we can go into our record folder here, our record folder, and we can listen to them. There they are. Load one, load it, load it, and load it. So we're gonna slice these and then we're gonna trigger them in an interesting way. Let's go into our sample library for this uh, for this channel, channel one. And let's see, we are in slice mode. Let's go to, uh, I don't think we're gonna have any zero crossings, but you have the ability to uh, change between linear and zero crossing slices. I did find that there's a fair amount of popping um, in here, so, uh, you know, that is what it is. Uh, zero crossing doesn't really seem to help that, but this is a complex waveform, so what are you going to do? We'll make sure we're in the first one. Let's slice it to 16. Let's go to the second one. Slice. Oh, shit. It remembers the uh, slice amount, so that's really, really useful. If you have a whole bunch of stuff, you could just mash the slice button, and it actually shows you the number up here where it says ZC16. So now we have a bunch of slices of these samples. Let's go ahead and start triggering them. Uh, I think we're going to use Steppy for this. Let's go ahead and just make a, a basic gate coming out of Steppy. You can see that we are in forward slice mode, and it's moving through each one of those slices we've now created. If we go over to random, it's going to pick random slices from that wavetable, which is really, really cool. And of course, we have the ability to switch between samples. So we're going to do that in a bit. First, let's make this a bit more interesting. We can go in here to our CV. Let's start giving it some CV, shall we? First thing we're going to do is grab an output of Pamela's new workout. I'll put it into track one here. We'll immediate CC CV feedback. We're going to go into our track in Pamela's, and we're going to switch this to 16th notes, and we're going to switch it to a random wave. Now we want to adjust the CV here by hitting shift and I'm going to make this positive five. There we go. You want it to fill up the whole thing. We want it to be sort of like in the middle of everything. So what can we assign this to? Well, first let's turn up the depth. I think we're going to want to assign this to decay. So let's go back into our envelope here. Turn down our hold all the way. Ah, uh, that option I turned on actually shows the range. Now that's cool. So now we are random stepping through. Uh, we are randomizing through the decay. So we're getting a more interesting thing. Let's go ahead and do that with uh, the sample as well. So I'll take another output from Pamela's new workout, which is the greatest module ever made besides Vimeo, besides uh, Mimeo phone, Vimeo phone. Uh, and let's go back into CV. Let's go ahead and arrange our depth here. And let's give ourselves a random wave coming out of this channel on PIMS. And let's assign this to our sample slot. Let's go back into our sample and make sure that we're on the first one. So that is definitely a result. If we exit sample mode here, we get the ability to retune this.
if we want to. Last thing we're going to do is take CV3 here. And we are going to go into our effects and go to low pass. We're going to turn the mix all the way up. It's going to get very quiet. Let us now go into our channel one of this, and we're going to do another random one. We're going to promise they'll be sounded in just a second. Go back into our CV, and let's go ahead and adjust our range. Turn this up and assign it to FX parameter one, which in this case. is our cutoff frequency. So that is recording and slicing and affecting and I've been having a lot of fun with this. I've actually been moving away from using the uh, the um, main drum source recently to, to uh, using it for this kind of stuff and then using um, Surface as a kick drum and uh, Knit from Afterlater Audio for a, uh, for a hi-hat, which is weird, but um, it is what it is. This is just so much fun. Um, I could take polyphonic sources from the Morphogene from this. I could sample from the Hydrosynth directly in here. Um, it's just really, really, really cool and easy to use. So let's go into our second channel and just add a beat real quick, just because we can. So that's the Erickson sample drum. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, I've played some examples throughout here. A lot of these examples will end up on my second channel uh, in one form or another. So go check that out if you want. Um, if you have any questions or tricks or comments about this friends, please do leave them in the comments. I always love to hear how people are using stuff. I think this is an incredibly useful uh, sampling device. The ability to take stuff from your other places here and chop it up and reconstitute it has been an absolute joy. Um, and I'm really happy to have this in a small rack. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. Um, thanks for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day.